Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, I want to show you how I would start a brand new live sound and audio production business with 10,000 bucks. If you have $10,000, it's totally possible to get all the equipment that you need to run great sound. Now, this is coming from somebody, I built my business from the ground up, from the first speaker all the way up to what Kettner Creative na is now. We do 1,400 events a year, and we run 24-7. Every single day, we are fully booked, aside from right now, because we're in the coronavirus. So here I am with a warehouse full of equipment, so I'm trying to provide good information to people who are looking to get started right now. Off the top, right now is not a good time to get started. I might be wrong. It could be the opposite, where it's a great time to get started, and I'll talk about why. Right now, there's a whole lot of companies right, that have a massive amount of debt. If they make it, it's going to drive the prices in the market down. They're going to be so hungry for work that it's going to undercut everybody. So if you're brand new, if you just went out and spent 10,000 bucks on a sound system, you're probably going to get underbid by guys that have 10, 15, 20 years of experience with far better equipment. Or it could go the other way. These companies could die. And the pie, overall pie, will get smaller, but there'll be a land grab. And there might be an opportunity for a new guy to come in and say, hey, we're brand new, and scoop up a bunch of clients. I don't think that's the case. I think the big guys are gonna be hungry, but I just wanna put that out there. Now, if you're watching this video two years from now, and you're thinking, hey, I'm looking to get started, I do wanna just put in the disclaimer that this business does take somewhere between three and 10 years until you're really cooking and you have a reliable paycheck and you have a set of equipment that's looking good. There's a lot of reasons for that. The biggest has to do with trust. When people don't know you, that's a full stop, you're gonna be done. So it takes a long time for people to see you working and then they'll throw you a bone when they're fully booked or, something, or they can't find the provider that they usually work with and then maybe a year later they'll try you again and each time you get that test, you have to be absolutely perfect. Now what happened with Kettner Creative, how we got started, is I had a lot of live sound experience. I grew up doing sound in the church, but I did not try to enter this industry deliberately. We literally fell into it. I was filming a conference. I knew the guy who was presenting and he knew I was handy with a camera. So he just brought me in to film his keynote speech. The live sound there was horrible and I had some information. So I went up and I fixed the feedback issue that they were having, and the client that was putting on that conference immediately hired me for four of their events every year. And that's the type of thing that I wanna make clear, is to get started, you really need that one little piece that somebody threw you a rope, and then you need to grab it and run. And after that, I held on to that one client. Out of that one client, we probably, met people and built relationships which, were, which became our first 10 clients and that was the backbone of which we built our business. Now if you don't have that, you need to just put your name into the lottery. You need to be seen at events, you need to be around to pick up those opportunities. So what I would recommend is volunteer at churches. The church tech community is very, very strong and very connected. If you, if you do good work at one church, it passes on quite a bit and you'll have enough work there. Um, if you know people in a band, offer to tour with them, offer to run their monitors, offer to run their front of house sound. That's the type of thing that you need to do to get started. And there's two schools of thought. There's the people that say, you know what? Never work unless you're getting paid 25 bucks an hour. You're better than that. And I, to those people, those people have, I've never seen those people have a business take off. Like we're talking the Amelia Earhart story here. The person that went in with no ego, no ego at all, and you need to be humble. And yeah, you might not be making a ton of money. You might be getting paid in beer. You might be getting paid in burgers. You might not even get that. Yeah, it's hard work. You're lifting heavy things, but that's the type of thing that's gonna set up your career. You need to meet people and people need to see you. They need to see how you work. They need to see that you show up sober, showered, in clean clothes, all black is the best, on time, all those things have to be perfect. All techs do in this community is they talk, okay? So if you show up 
and you had a beer one time before you show up at work, something like that, that story is seeded. Everybody will know and it'll take you a lot of years to overcome that. If you show up late, if you jam on an event as doors open or something like that, those are brutal things that will kill your career. If you're trying to be a freelance guy or if you're trying to start your own company, your reputation is everything. Being half an hour to an hour early at every event is the best thing that you can do to set yourself up for a good reputation. Now let's get into the gear because I'm sure that's why you're watching, but I did want to put that in. You could buy all the gear in the world and it does not matter if people don't know who you are and if people don't like you. You have to be likable, okay? So if, if you're starting, you're going to go through one or two tracks. You, if you're doing a lot of corporate work, then you can get by with a lot less expensive gear. And if you're doing uh, music work, you're going to be getting paid less and you, you have that bigger upfront cost. So just be aware of that. So if you're getting started in the corporate world, I would still recommend the same equipment or the same family equipment as the music world, but you can definitely scale down. So the first thing I would do with either track is I would start with some lower level digital audio console. I think it's super important before you buy speakers to own your own console. Owning your own console buys you the freedom to work on things at home. You can do premixes, uh, some like lower end consoles like here the QU32, 16, 24, it, there's no offline editor. So it's nice to familiarize yourself with the console and maybe do a premix or something like that to make sure that you're super prepared for whatever you're about to walk into. Speakers you can rent and speakers take up a lot of space to store. But we're talking, you have 10,000 bucks, how are you gonna get started? Here's what I would do. For corporate, I would start with a pair of plastic 12 inch speakers. So on the Yamaha line, that means the Yamaha DXR12. Now, if you're scaling up from there, the next thing I would do is I would buy a pair of eights. In the corporate world, eights are super popular because they're low size. You can put them on the stage for front fill or you can put them in the back as delays, but they have a nice minimal concept. The reason that I recommend starting with the 12 is because in the corporate world, oftentimes you'll have a after party or an event after that has music and 12s aren't as good as the 15 but it'll limp you until you can afford to buy more speakers. Now for perspective at Kentner Creative we probably have between 12, between 8 and 12 of each one of these speakers so they all definitely have their sweet spot and their purpose but at the beginning you want to be flexible, you want something that's modular. The other reason to go with 8s and then 12s is if you then start doing music now you have your monitors done. Now with a plastic box, you don't really need full wood boxes like the DSR series of Yamaha if you're doing corporate. If you're doing music, I highly recommend starting with a, 15 -inch, a pair of 15 inch speakers and a pair of 18 inch subs. The 15 inch speakers should be a full wood box and at least 1100 watts. The watt ratings don't give too much credit to them because it's mostly marketing. You're not actually running them at 1100 watts. You're probably running them at two or 300, uh, just in case you didn't know that. And then for the sub, the reason I would start with 18s is because we started with 12s and I hated it. We started with 12s for a small corporate gig that had a DJ and it was, we thought it was great. Three events later, it was too small. So either don't buy a sub or rent a sub until you can get a proper 1000 watt or more 18 inch speaker. Bonus points for wheels on the back, uh, if at all possible. If, you, if your speaker or your sub doesn't come with them, add them on yourself. So the DXS18 is the Yamaha sub that I recommend. It's, I think it's their main sub right now that they're pushing, but um, we've been super happy. The bandpass design has been awesome for DJ stuff, uh, rock music out in outdoor events. Um, but yeah, so back to where I would start. The next thing is, with the digital console, I wouldn't start analog. There's no point starting analog at this point. You'll save maybe a couple hundred bucks right off the hop, but it will come back to bite you by the time you want to add a compressor or a gate or anything like that. And you have all this outboard gear. You want to travel light. I'm assuming you don't have a big vehicle. So a digital console has all that in a size efficient manner. Now, we love the Allen & Heath stuff. Uh, Yamaha has their TF line, which is in the same 
uh, price point. We prefer the Allen and Heath for what it does. Uh, Soundcraft has a mixer in this price point. Uh, the X32 is in this price point. Whatever you like, I would just recommend if you're doing corporate, uh, we started with the QU16. 16. 16 channel mixer did a lot. Uh, once we started doing more music, then we had to buy a 32. Um, so if you're starting out and you're really pinching pennies, maybe, and you're doing music, I would, wouldn't do less than 24 channels. If you have the space and you have a couple extra bucks, the 32 channel uh, is good. Next up, I would get a couple SM58s and a couple SM57s just to cover miking instruments and voices. Um, most people kind of recommend, we got a killer deal on four channels of ULX wireless, I'm sure. That was, I think we got them for like four channels for 1500 bucks from a gospel group that was upgrading to ULXD uh, back in the day. And that was our first four pack and that was like, they're still going to this day. That's what I have in this video just to show you. Um, but I wouldn't go less than ULX. The BLX and all that, just don't even bother. You want ULX, if I was buying right now, if I was getting into the business, ULXD, it is a thousand bucks a channel. It sucks to buy. You can get them used, but they are rock solid. We're talking 300 foot range just off the antennas. You can use paddles with them. You can use an antenna combiner. You can scale it up and down, and it plays nice. Almost every shop in town has US ULXD, so if you are looking to cross-rent your stuff out or if you're needing to rent more, you have stuff that's all playing nice together, and I think that's important. Along that same line, we did just do a video on why to buy locally. This goes for things like cables, flight cases, all that. It's super important. Uh, it lets the community know that you're in town, you're serious. And two, when you buy Gator cases, this one's a Gator case, is one of the first ones that we got. They're garbage. Like, they work really well for the first year and you might save 50 bucks over getting a custom one made in town, but you will hate it. The wheels will break in a year and that's 100 bucks to replace it and then everything else starts to go. The Gator cases, just don't do it. Don't buy your cases online. Find a local manufacturer, take your speakers in and take your console in and they'll make you a case for it up to your spec and it'll be a little bit more we're talking 10 or 15 percent more but it's totally worth it same goes for cable trunks and then you can start thinking about how you want to do your uh, trunks with templates and that sort of thing look online there's lots of discussion on it um, so basically to sum it up if i was getting started in music i'd be starting with a pair of 15s and a pair of 18 inch subs that's for your mains that's probably about three thousand bucks four thousand bucks right there and then either a couple 12s for monitors now you're up to five or six thousand two thousand bucks for a console that's eight thousand and then you really want that last two thousand for microphones and cable we're playing pretty close the bonus points of anything you can get on wheels uh, that will be a little bit outside of it, but if you buy used, I'm pretty sure that you could get all this in a wicked setup for about uh, 10,000 bucks and then grow from there. You can definitely rent until you, you get to the point where you can afford everything. Kentner Creative, personally, like we, we've rented a handful of times. It's never been a good experience. We've always been in a situation where we were able to buy the things that we needed for the next gig, and it's always worked out for us. The couple times that we've sub-rented, we've been burnt big time. I know that's not everybody's experience. We're pretty unique that way where we do not rent from other people, but uh, it's worked out really well for us. A couple DI boxes. Um, for the wireless, we, like I said, we bought that first four pack off the gospel group. We got these Beta 87s. They've been amazing to us. Uh, every mic we've got since has been a Beta 87. Just keep it all in the family for wireless handhelds. Um, if you're really wanting to go the extra mile, um, make sure like for one of your receivers that you also have a lapel mic that's pretty a pretty common request if you're doing a corporate gig and then I would say uh, for your own like success don't be afraid to get into video and lighting a lot of audio guys they will grow and grow and grow and then they hit that ceiling when they have their own little audio company like this you do need to satisfy that one shot that one kind of source for everything. Um, clients are really looking for that. They'd, unless you go up to the really high end, unless you're working with Live Nation or something like that, 
They don't like picking best of breed. They want one phone call to make to hire the things that they need for their event. I hope this video makes sense. I hope it's not too all over the place. If you have any questions about this stuff, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe to the channel. I've done everything I could here to describe the things that I would buy if I was first getting started and the business side of things. Uh, don't go spending a lot of money unless you really think you have that client or the couple clients to get you through um, because there's nothing worse than having to store all this gear and look at it when it's just gathering dust, uh, when new stuff is constantly coming out. You want to be buying the new stuff when you first arrive on the scene. That way you have uh, great equipment that will help your reputation. Thanks so much for watching. And again, just leave a comment in the comment section below if there's anything that you think I didn't answer. Thank you.